Hey Legends, Blake here with another video and today I'll send a product that is a great way to uh, grow and propagate your aquarium plants, saving them for another day, or an awesome way to display aquatic plants indoors in a way that won't get you in trouble if you do get in trouble from having way too many aquariums around the place. The product I'm talking about today is called a Vert Planter Lift and it's a brand new product that is about to hit the market in early May. There is, this is the second generation of the Vert Planter, the previous being the Vert Planter Classic, which I did also have plant out and keep for a little while. That product is here and you can see the remnants of scaping adhesive and so forth that uh, I used to stick the moss on. I wouldn't recommend that and that's not the way that I've set up the Vert Planter that we're gonna set up today. But um, you can see it is kind of a terracotta uh, structure with some interesting little pockets there. It comes with a plate at the bottom and a lid for the top. And this is still for sale uh, via the link that I'll put as a pinned comment below and in the description. But after releasing this product, they took on board the feedback that I provided and of course others. They improved the hole depth so that it improved seepage. Uh, they widened the bottom so that it came out slower. And the last one is they Removed the lid and it became an option because a lot of people like to put pothos and things in the top because what happens once this is planted is it gets filled with water and water slowly comes out of these little pockets. And I also thought it'd be a good idea to compare it to the Dua uh, TerraBase L. So uh, Dua aka ADA re released a TerraBase not too long ago and it's a clay tube very similar without the pockets that you plant in the same manner and I thought it'd be fun to compare the growth between the two while I'm setting them both up. As well as that, I decided to give it a few weeks so we could measure some of the growth and kind of track a little bit of the progress as time went on. So for this project, I'm just going to attach everything using this fishing line. It's way overkill as well using 50 pound line for this, but it's just what I had on hand. And luckily that day I got a delivery from Aquaplant Culture from Aqua Depot of some awesome plants some submerged, some uh, tissue cultures or emers grown. So I thought it'd be great to showcase both of those on these two projects. So I began just by looping the fishing line around the top of the terracotta base so that I could start to just wind it around and place moss and start to hold that in place. The moss I am using is submerged grown. It's just from tanks all around the fish room. So there will be a bit of a transitional period as that uh, goes from submerged grown to emers grown. Uh, that's to be expected and all you have to do to make that happen is have a nice moist environment that it won't dry out too quickly. So to do that you can see behind the um, vert planter here I've got some of the uh, Dua Neo Glass Airs which is just a you know very tall aquarium essentially and I put a lid on both of those so that it would trap the humidity in. As well as that I'd spray it down every couple of days with some uh, Wabikusa mist and you know you can just do the same thing with some water or add a tiny bit of fertilizer to the water if you must but don't add too much because it might actually burn the moss if you have too much uh, concentrated fertilizer directly on it. So you can see pretty fun and easy to just wind the um, moss on but it does use quite a fair bit of moss so uh, if, you don't, if you're not patient and you want it to look complete from day one they make sure you grow a lot of moss around your, your, your fish room or in your tanks. Make sure as well that you're keeping everything damp during the process of planting it out. Keep a spray bottle on hand and it'll really help you out. So I did the exact same thing with the TerraBase, uh, just winding on some moss to the outside. Um, there was, you know, little bits of Java fern and so forth in the moss too, but you know, I wasn't too fussed about that. The next plant I decided to put on uh, alongside the moss is some Hydrocotyl Tripetita Japan. Awesome little plant, looks kind of like coriander or something like that. But um, I think that is a plant that's just made for things like this. And yeah, it grows pretty well in mass grain as well. So it's a bit of a creeper plant. Uh, so yeah, I thought that would be perfect for these projects. And again, the specimens I used were submerged grain. So there's a conversion process yet again. Then last but not least, I had some tissue cultures for, of some crypts. I thought, I've never really tried crypts immersed grown before, so uh, since I had these on hand, I might as well 
use them. So you can see I've got Crypt Wenti Brown, Green, and uh, Crypt Tropica, I think. Uh, and there's heaps and heaps and heaps of crypts in this tissue culture. So I just kind of planted them sporadically around each of the bases. This can be a little bit tricky. Best bet is to just sort of tuck them in around where some fishing line is, or worst case scenario, you might just have to wrap some more fishing line around. I do prefer this rather than super gluing because I just find the super glue sort of, you know, creates an added level of stress when you've already got a conversion that's gonna take place. Well, not so much with the tissue culture plants, the uh, submerged grain ones will have that conversion process to deal with. Okay, so that was about three weeks ago. Now let's take a look at what we have going on here now. So if I take off the lid, I just had a combined lid made of greenhouse panel for both of the Neo Glass Airs. I'll show you the vert planter first. So you can see you do get a little bit of water seepage down at the bottom there. And that's no issue at all. I just siphoned it out once in three weeks. So that's kind of the same accumulation. That, that's the amount you'll, you'll sort of get in 10 days or so. This is how it is going. So you can see that there is definitely a conversion process happening. Uh, the plants at the top of the vert planter here seem to be doing a lot better as they're closer to the light. I do find with these sorts of things, it is pretty difficult to actually light them. So you might wanna keep them near a windowsill or something that's gonna get a better spread of light. But certain things are going pretty well here. We got the, the hydrocotyls doing nicely. This clump of crypts over, you know, beside my head there is doing quite nicely. And the moss, at least at the top, has definitely settled in and taken place. Down, down the bottom, there's a lot more conversion that needs to take place. But overall, you know, in a few months time, that's when something like this is really, really going to take on a, a whole different look of its own once everything's settled in and used to their new growing environment. So let's compare that to the uh, near the Dua Terra base. And once again, it's under the same lighting conditions and the same tank. So similar amount of seepage, if anything, a bit less that's come out there in the same period of time. To be honest, I would have to say that the Terra base is performing a lot better. Um, price wise, they're pretty comparable. This is a large Terra base, I believe which is uh, from Nature Aquarium, $71 plus $17 shipping. Or of course you could buy them in person if you live in Melbourne. And the vert planter is uh, with my discount from the code that's gonna be uh, in the description and so forth, $77, I believe. So pretty comparable on price, although this one, uh, vert planter does have free shipping. Uh, so that's a win there, especially for international Viewers, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And just because Vert Planter has sent me this product here, that doesn't mean that I'm going to try and pretend like this isn't performing a lot better. I mean, you can just see it with your own eyes there. If I hold them both up and try not to drop either one of them, you know, I wouldn't say either one's necessarily a failure or a success, but um, definitely in terms of top to bottom, then uh, the the Terra base is doing really well. A lot of the crypts have melted back on this, although the ones at the top, again, closer to the light, seem to be doing better than those planted elsewhere. And in actual fact, I remember when I set this up, I did this one second and I actually ran out of quite a lot of moss on this, so it's filled in quite a bit. There's just one little bulb bald spot down the bottom. So there you go guys, that was my experience planting out the Vert Planter Lift, the new generation of Vert Planter that we'll be releasing soon in May. I'd say it's definitely an improvement on the Classic, for example. The seepage does seem far improved and you, know, you can just tell from the shape of the indentations that you know, it's, it's a far improved circulation, especially for us with our water demanding aquatic plants that we're likely to be using. However, with that said, you know, it, de it definitely goes to show that there are strong competitors within this market. So Vert Planter will have to stay on top of their game. 
So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Are you interested in picking up a vert planter or a terabase or something similar for yourself? I do have to say at the very least, a super, super fun weekend project and a great use of trimmings or clippings from your aquariums, far better at least than throwing them out or throwing them to your uh, biggest herbivorous fish. If you like the video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.